Bettis here reporting live from the home of movie star J.C. Cramwood. In just a few minutes, Cramwood will be unveiling a plaque of himself that he will dedicate to himself because he is the only movie star ever to come out of this town. And he likes himself. And now the moment I've been waiting for. I will now unveil the brass plaque that was made especially for me and that I will be donating to the town so everyone can enjoy it. So without further ado, I now present to you me. Turn on the lights. I'd like Sonia Sondheim to please stand up and take a bow for her excellent work in making this magnificent piece. That's enough. Turn on the rest of the lights! Okay, we saw it. Let's go. Oh, I bet it's beautiful. Especially with that voice. Oh, boy, all of a sudden it's really hot in here. It must be all those spotlights. Don't forget there's enough cheese and crackers for everyone! As long as you only have one cracker and one piece of cheese each. Now I'll take some questions about what it's like to be a famous movie star. Ah, a young fan. What's your question? I think the plaque is falling. Look at it. Look at it. I've got it. Everything's under control. Look out. I'm all right. Are there any more questions? Please, speak up, I... I can't see any hands. Hey, Cramwood, thanks for a great night. You're welcome! I mean, that was really something, the way the plaque came crashing down on top of you. Boy, it's really hot up here. Yeah, it's... it's the spotlights. I wanted to make sure everybody could see the plaque! Well, I think everybody saw it. Good! Until it fell on top of you. Then you couldn't really see it. I guess not. That was a really dangerous stunt. Well, it wasn't supposed to fall. It wasn't? No. But that could have killed you. Really? Well, maybe if it was a little heavier and there were about a hundred of them falling at once. But yeah, definitely, I'd say it could have killed you. Wow. You know, I've almost been killed in my movies, but never in real life. Uh, it's really scary. I'll bet. Although I'm really surprised about that plaque, because Sonia Sondheim is supposed to be a very good sculptress. She's the best! It cost me a lot of money! Well, this is not right. That plaque was too big for that wooden frame, and she should have known it. You really think so? Why should it matter that nobody respects you as an artist? Yeah! You're still a guy who had a plaque fall on his head. You're a victim. That's right! Well, my dear Cramwood, this is wrong. And I cannot stand by while a wrong goes on. I will right this wrong that goes on and on in science court. No! But, but if, if I, I can, can make, make a few, few bucks, bucks on, on the, the side, side, then it's so be it. it. Wow, look at that. Hello? Sonia Sundheim? Hello? Oh, hi. You must be Miss Kremple. No, Miss Kremple is Miss Kremple. I'm Tim, her assistant. Oh, I'm sorry. Hi, you must be Miss Kremple. I'm so glad you could come. What are you making? Cookies. Have one? Thanks. These are delicious. Watch out, they're hot. Oh man, they're awesome. Oh, thanks. Sonia, you said on the phone you're being sued by Mr. Cramwood? Yes. Cramwood is saying that the plaque I made for him was faulty. How much is he suing you for? He doesn't want money. If he wins, he wants me to make an incredible statue of him. His attorney dropped off the specifications yesterday. Listen to this. If found guilty, you will make a life-size statue of J.C. Cramwood that is 200 feet high. That's not life-size. <laughs> Cramwood thinks he's bigger than life. Can science court make her do that, Miss Crample? I'm afraid so, Tim. Let me tell you both right now. That brass plaque was a perfect fit for the wood frame. Really? Absolutely. Because, Sonia, I was at the ceremony, too, and it looked like the plaque was too big for the frame. Oh, man, did it ever! 
That plaque was bulging right out of that little wooden frame. Uh, yes, thank you, Tim. I'm telling you, the plaque was a perfect fit, right down to the millimeter. Will you two help me? I don't want to have to make this statue of Cramwood. It'll take me years, and I have better things to do. Miss Sondheim, we'd be glad to help you. Hello, and welcome to Science Court. I'm Jen Bettis reporting, and today we have the case of the falling idol. Oh, here comes Judge Stone. Let's watch. Science Court is now in session. All rise, take a quick stretch, <clears throat> touch your toes, and then sit for the Honorable Judge Stone. Thank you, stenographer Fred. Fred, what are you doing? I thought I might try sketching the trial. What about typing? I always wanted to be a courtroom artist, because uh, they... Okay, Fred. Well, good morning, everyone. So today we have J.C. Cramwood suing Sonia Sondheim, claiming she made a brass plaque that was too big for the wooden frame and a wooden frame that was too small for the brass plaque. Mr. Savage, did you write this? Yes. You have to try to be more concise. Right. Gotcha. You mean, like, shorter and quicker, something quick that's not really long, but really short and clearer, not complicated and confusing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think you got it. And you're suing for... Well, Your Honor, if we win, or should I say, when I think we'll win, Miss Sondheim will have to make an elaborate 200-foot statue of J.C. Cramwood. <laughs> Mr. Savage, let's hear your opening statement. <clears throat> My client, Mr. J.C. Cramwood, is a famous movie star. He's probably the most famous person to ever come out of this town. But because of Sonia Sondheim's shoddy work, a brass plaque fell on top of him at an important ceremony where he should not have had anything fall on top of him. Thank you, Mr. Savage. Ms. Grempel? Thank you, Your Honor. We will show that the incident at the Cramwood ceremony was not a reflection of Sonia Sondheim's work, but rather the result of a scientific principle. Mr. Savage, call your first witness, please. I call to the stand J.C. Cramwood. <laughs> Cramwood, did a brass plaque made by Sonia Sondheim fall on top of you? Yes. Was it supposed to? No. Your witness, Miss Crumple. We have no questions. I rest my case, Your Honor. Good, Mr. Savage. Very concise. Thank you. Ms. Grumble, the floor's all yours. Thank you. I'd like to call materials expert Dr. Julie Bean to the stand. <laughs> Dr. Bean, have you had a chance to examine the accident scene? Yes. And what did you find? Well, I discovered that the plaque is made of brass, the frame is made of wood, and the spotlights that Cramwood used were extremely hot. And what does that tell you? that there could be a very simple scientific explanation as to why the plaque looked like it was too big for the frame. Objection. What are you objecting to? Easy, Miss Crimple. Mr. Savage is right. Let the jury decide if there's a simple scientific explanation. <laughs> Continue, Dr. Bean. Well, the heat from the lights caused the particles that make up the plaque. Objection. Now what? Go ahead, Mr. Savage. I examined that plaque myself. It's not made of pieces or particles. It's completely solid. You're just not looking close enough. I had my face right up to it. Okay, take it easy. Let's take a quick break to compose ourselves. That was a little particle joke. Get it? Compose? Never mind. Court is recessed. I have to admit, that plaque sure looks like one solid piece to me. Is it actually made up of particles? Let's hear what you, our courtside commentators, think. All right, we were talking about particles. I think Dr. Bean can explain. Dr. Bean, could you please explain this a little further? Of course. Everything in the universe is made of very, very tiny basic particles called molecules and atoms. Atom? Who's Adam? <laughs> <laughs> Not Adam, Mr. Savage. Atom. Uh, Michaela, why don't you enlighten Mr. Savage? Sure. An atom is the smallest piece of an element. Oh, okay. What's an element? An element is a basic building block of everything. So the atoms of an element are like different shaped toy blocks uh, that kind of fit together? Something like that. And the atoms combine to make molecules. Okay, my brain's full. Uh, let's not get too sidetracked from the case. Continue. Well, heat has a very interesting effect on these particles. 
If I could do a demonstration, I think that would really help. Go ahead, Dr. Bean. Thank you. I have here a piece of brass similar to what was used in Grandma's plaque. And here is a pointer that can detect the slightest movement. Now, could we turn the heat up in the room, please? Huh? I'm not cold. Neither am I. I'm a little chilly. We need to turn the heat up for the demonstration. Okay, stenographer Fred, can you crank the heat, please? Actually, Your Honor, if there's a smaller room we could use, it would heat up faster. Well, there's no smaller room in the courthouse that we could use. What about your chambers, Your Honor? Oh, you don't want to go in there. It's small. Oh, it's so messy. It sounds perfect. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> but we're talking about my chambers. Oh, all right. For the sake of science, everybody, get in my chambers. But don't touch anything. Okay, everybody in. Yeah. Stenographer Fred, turn up the heat, please. All the way up to its highest setting. All the way up. All the way up. <laughs> Now we wait a little while for the brass to heat up, and we keep our eye on the pointer. A lot going on today in Judge Stone's chambers. Everyone is waiting to see what happens to the piece of brass. While we're waiting, let's hear what you, our courtside commentators, predict about the experiment. Make sure everybody has some water. Your Honor, this is too hot. Look, the pointer is moving because the brass plaque is expanding. The heat is causing the tiny particles in the brass to move around each other faster and faster. And as the particles move, they need more space. So the brass starts to get bigger. It expands. The same way the brass plaque expanded when Cramwood turned on all the very hot spotlights. Yes. Could the brass plaque have expanded enough to pop out of its wood frame? Yes, absolutely. <sighs> and what happens when the brass cools down? Well, then the particles slow down and the thing gets smaller again. Objection! I'm very hot. Me too. Let's get back into the courtroom and. Somebody turn on the air conditioning. Ah, that's better. Jury, how do you feel? Good. 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 Fred, where do we leave off? We were all sweaty in your chambers. See? Right. Thank you. Actually, Your Honor, I was about to blow this case wide open. I thought you rested your case. Uh, it couldn't sleep. It was too hot. Okay, go ahead. I call materials expert Dr. Henry Fullagast to the stand. <laughs> Dr. Fullagast. It's Fullagast. Oh right. Uh, doctor, as a scientist, what do you know about science? Well, could you be a little more specific? Certainly. Is it true that brass expands when it is heated? Yes. Could a brass plaque expand enough to pop out of a wooden frame? It's possible. What else expands when it gets heated? Well, everything. Everything? Everything. Look. See, air expands when it's heated, and the mercury in this thermometer expands when it's heated. Doctor Fuller guessed, if the plaque and the frame both expand when heated, yeah, then the plaque should not have fallen out because as the plaque expands, so does the wood. They both get bigger together. Well, that's true, but unless. The plaque was just too big for the frame, right? Well, I can't comment on the quality of Miss Sondheim's work. That's all. You've been a great help, Doctor. See ya, Miss Crampel. Your witness. Your Honor, we don't have any questions for Doctor Fullergast. Instead, we would like to call Professor Parsons to the stand. <laughs> Hello, everybody. <laughs> Professor, let's start at the beginning. What do you want to know? Well, we heard from Dr. Bean and Dr. Fullergast that things expand when they heat up. That's correct. Good people, those two. Well, Professor, let me ask you directly. Shoot. Why would the plaque pop out of the frame if the brass and the wood are both expanding? Whoa! Time out. Time out. Yeah. What do you mean time out? Well, I don't want to hear the answer to that question. Why not? It might hurt my case. You're just delaying the inevitable. Huh? 
Never mind. Uh, okay, we'll take a very short break for Mr. Savage. Don't go too far. We'll be right back. This is very exciting. Why would the brass plaque pop out if the wood frame is expanding too? Let's hear how our courtside commentators predict Professor Parsons will answer this question. Easy. Different things expand different amounts. I don't I don't do that. That. You see, these tiny, tiny basic particles are arranged slightly differently in different things. So every different thing expands a different amount when heated. Look, here are two strips of metal stuck together. One is steel and the other is brass. Let's heat them up, shall we? Now, don't try this at home. <laughs> I'm a trained professional. Anybody got any marshmallows? Wieners? <laughs> Who wants a schmore? Hey, the strip is bending to one side. Oh. Well, that's right, because one kind of metal is expanding more than the other. It's forcing the whole thing to move over, you see? That's how a thermostat works, right? Yes, that's right. Very good, my little thermostat man. <laughs> Mine works by turning the dial. No, that's how you set it. You see, inside the thermostat in your house, you might have two strips of different metal. As the air in your house gets hotter or colder, the strips bend back and forth, pushing the on-off button on your furnace. Pretty neat, huh? <laughs> well, I'm still winning the case if brass and wood expand at the same rate. <laughs> well, they don't. Brass expands a lot more than wood. Well, I'm still winning the case if the jury didn't hear you. I believe they did, sir. <laughs> well, I'm still winning because there's one more witness I almost forgot to call. One more witness? I call Sonia Sondheim to the stand. <laughs> Sonia, you've made some pretty nice stuff over the years, haven't you? Well, I like to think so. And you've won awards and had exhibits and sold some of your works of art for a lot of money, haven't you? Yes. So why suddenly did you make something that falls apart? Or should I say something that falls on people? Well, it didn't fall apart because of anything I did. It expanded because of the heat from those powerful spotlights. <laughs> so, in other words, you're blaming science. Well, yes. And Cramwood for using those hot spotlights. So are you telling this courtroom that it has nothing to do with the fact that you're in love with Cramwood? What? <gasps> order! Order! Calm down, people! Please! Miss Sondheim, do you remember when I went to see you at your studio yesterday? Yes. Will you please tell the court what happened? Well, you handed me the description of that monstrosity you call a statue that you want me to make. Yes, go on. But then, when you saw a couple of pictures of Cramwood on my wall, you went skipping out the door singing, I'm going to win, I'm going to win. That's right. You have pictures of Cramwood on your wall because you're in love with him. And I figure when Cramwood didn't respond to your advances, you vowed revenge, which came in the form of a brass plaque falling on top of his head in front of hundreds of fans eating cheese and crackers. Isn't that right? No, that's not right. I have pictures of him on my wall because I was carving his face into the brass plaque. I needed to know what the guy looked like. Oh. Well, I still say the plaque was way too big for the frame, and that's why it fell. Okay, thank you, Mr. Savage. We may as well get right to your closing argument. Fine with me. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, I'm still winning this case if everything Professor Parsons and Dr. Bean and Dr. Fullagast and Sonia Sondheim said is wrong. It isn't. <laughs> well, that doesn't matter. Oh, yes, it does. I say Sonia was in a jealous rage. No, she wasn't in a rage. And wanted revenge. No, she didn't want revenge. And that's why she will have to build a statue. No, she won't have to build a statue. Of Cranwood that will look like the Statue of Liberty. There is no Statue of Liberty. <laughs> I'm kidding. Are you finished, Mr. Savage? Well, I still... Yes, he is. But... Ms. Crumple, your closing number... I mean, closing argument, please. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, my client is an artist of the highest caliber and should not have to make this ridiculous statue of Cramwood. You see, the reason the brass plaque fell on him is that it was exposed to such an incredible amount of heat. The plaque expanded and broke away from the wood frame, which was also expanding, but at a much slower rate. Solid things seem solid, but look closer and they're not. The particles inside are moving, especially when it's hot. And as those babies start to spin around with lots of vigor, they push themselves apart a bit, which makes the stuff grow bigger. It's our understanding. Is 
something on my nose? That's just the way it grows. Okay, thank you. Very nice. Jury, the case is all yours. Deliberate and get back to us. Well, the jury has the case, but what will they decide? What do you think, courtside commentators? Fred, the jury reached a verdict. W what was it? Well, they didn't say yet. We're waiting for you. Oh. The jury has reached a verdict? Jury, do you have a verdict? We do, Your Honor. Okay, let's hear it. We, the d defendant, find the jury. What? I mean, the jury. We, the jury, find the jury. Oh, wait. Hold it. It's we, the jury. Right. We, the jury. We, the jury. Find the defendant. Find the defendant. Guilty or not guilty? Guilty or not guilty. No, you tell me guilty or not guilty. Guilty or not guilty. No, pick one. Oh, we find Sonia Sondheim not guilty of making a bad plaque. Very good, jury. Um, it was the heat from the intensely hot spotlights that caused the brass to expand and fall out of the wood frame. You see, everything is made up of tiny, right. tiny... Right, I, I, I know. I was here for the whole trial, remember? All right, sorry. Okay, thank you, jury. Science court is adjourned. Group picture. Okay, nobody move. For a long time, please. I have things to do.